You feel alive with the energy of the city out here. Three centuries of architecture are visible. You see beautiful old mansions, the city core building, and even 30 Rock. Hey, Sarah. You never know. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. We've got some fabulous homes to show you in New York and LA and I am bringing it all to you today from this impressive design forward loft in the heart of Tribeca. As you step inside, an elegant entry gallery leads directly to this open corner great room with an easy flow between living and dining areas. Pour your guests a cocktail at the built-in bar and cozy up to this wood-burning fireplace. There's even a planted patio for alfresco entertaining. This sleek marble kitchen seems like a great place to whip something up delicious, or, you know, you can just unpack your takeout on this oversized island. This over 2,700 square foot loft has three bedrooms, including a south-facing primary suite that's both private and pin drop quiet. And it even has a terrace so you can test the air before deciding what to wear. We are getting started with the always entertaining Brian Lewis at one of his newest listings in Midtown Manhattan. He shows us this freshly renovated stylish duplex featuring walls of windows, luxurious living spaces, and a huge wraparound terrace. Let's join him for a closer look. Hey, I'm Brian Lewis, and today I am coming to you from the Baccarat Residences. That's a name associated with luxury, beauty, and rarity. And this home is all of those things and more. This duplex is on the 18th and 19th floors and has been completely redone and reinvented as an indoor-outdoor paradise in the heart of Midtown. First impressions matter. They set the tone for the entire home. And as you turn the corner from the entry, you spill into this immense living dining space. Soaring ceilings, marble floors, integrated fireplace, and walls of floor to ceiling windows. Or for a change of speed, just chilling on the sofa and feeling on top of the world. There is a warmth and an intimacy here that belies its scale. And for those summer soirees, all of these doors open for a seamless alfresco experience. I mentioned rare earlier. <laughs> this is what makes this home so rare. There's over 3,000 square feet out here wrapping around nearly the entire place. There's multiple seating areas, a dining space, and even a pickleball court. You feel alive with the energy of the city out here. Three centuries of architecture are visible. You see beautiful old mansions, the city core building, and even 30 Rock. Hey, Sarah. You never know. Who's hungry? Because this is the place where the culinary magic happens. This kitchen. It's like out of a dream. Marble counters, custom cabinetry, trophy appliances, dual wine storage, and a table big enough for any holiday feast. So get ready because all your family and friends, they're just gonna start showing up, invited or not. Rounding out the downstairs are two ensuite bedrooms one of which is configured as this sunny, stylish corner home office. Not a bad place to run an empire. There are three bedroom suites up here, one of which is configured as a great gym, two of which anyone would consider a fantastic primary suite. This one is my favorite. This sweet suite is definitely one of the best bedrooms I have ever seen. It has great views, multiple seating areas, a wet bar, 
It's also got a big marble bathroom with a party shower. This is the place to say good morning and good night to the best city in the world. You're just not gonna see a home like this in New York very often, maybe anywhere. I mean, this is practically a house in the sky. And I'll definitely be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for the literal shout out, Brian. I'm sorry I missed you. I was out touring another impeccable property. <laughs> Speaking of impeccable properties, coming up after the break, we are in Venice to check out this unique sculptural home. Welcome back everyone. Now we take a look at this unique home in Venice, California. Writer, producer Stuart Burns of the iconic Simpsons and Futurama gives us a tour of what's known as the Tectonic House. Hi, I'm Stuart Burns. I am a writer for The Simpsons and this is my home in LA. This uh, house is the Tectonic House because of all the angles and as you'll see the floors are not all over each other directly and you'll see that it looks like this house was hit by an earthquake. But trust me, it's all very stable and uh, hopefully a very enjoyable place to see. So this is the first part of the house. We call it the tower because it sort of just goes up and up and up. So we put some silks in here, which are a lot of fun. And um, I feel a genius trick that we came up with was we built this structure called the parasite that spirals all the way up into the upper reaches of the house. It became our bench and our shelves. And I believe as my mom pointed out, this is an old colonial design, having the kind of eating level table and this nice couch around it. And this is this great space that allows us to spend all our time in this room. This is the family area. Over here is my wife Lillian, who is uh, working away. We really designed this, I think, sort of like college dorm, or the college dorms we were used to, where there was this large living space and these tiny bedrooms, because we wanted the kids to have a big space to play. So this has been a large couch, hang out, watch TV space, and this has also been a toys all over the floor, somebody clean this up type of space. Now we're heading back into, well, the tower. And you can see the big corrugated metal structure going up here. And this entire patio walkway is really a result of the connecting of the houses. This is the parasite now continuing to move up that we designed into uh, a little bit of an office. And you can kind of check out when people are coming in the door, but also we found somehow the kids never knew we were here when we were working up here. And now we are heading up into the primary bedroom. By the way, this is a really cool view when you look up. It's sort of Grand Canyon-esque. One of the things I love about the parasite is how it changes as we reach each different level of the house. And so what we're walking past is the parasite with all these shelves and a sort of open closet. Basically the closet, the hallway, and yet another little office cubby space is part of this. Relatively small as a primary room, but I think of it as just the first step on a larger space that's the primary area. So we finally made it up to the very tip top of the house here. This is uh, the roof deck. It's great, it's like constant fresh air and nothing better to do when you get to the end of something than sit down and enjoy the view. All right, I hope you enjoyed the Tectonic House. Thank you for coming, let's get you out of here. Coming up just after the break, Design Delight in Brooklyn as we tour this year's Real Simple Home.
Welcome back, everyone. Our friends at Real Simple recently joined forces with some of the brightest stars in interior design to transform a raw, modern white box into this dreamy Brooklyn Heights home. And the best part, it's all shoppable. So if anything inspires you, just scan that QR code and shop away. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Lauren Iannotti, Editor-in-Chief of Real Simple, and welcome to our sixth annual Real Simple Home here in beautiful Brooklyn Heights. Over the past year, our editorial team has been working with some talented designers to turn this beautiful raw space into a hub of dreamy design ideas. And I can't wait to show you the beautiful results. If at any point in this tour you see something that you like in particular, scan the QR code and it'll take you shopping. You enter the apartment and you're kind of drawn directly to this big, beautiful living space designed by Bobby Burke. One of Bobby's biggest challenges with this space is to take this glass box and make it feel like a room. He did that first by anchoring it with this deep blue floor rug. Then he layered sculptural pieces with different geometric shapes all around it. The sofa has a dip in the center. The coffee table has these rounded legs that really bring a softness to it. We love this monochromatic table lamp. So the shade and the base are the same color. It's a huge trend in decor right now. And these kooky sconces on the wall, which add fun dimension, who would have thought to put them between the windows? Bobby showed us that you can really think outside the box, even when you're designing inside of one. What's not to love about this kitchen and dining area designed by Kim and Scott Vargo of Yellow Brick Home? It has gorgeous natural wood cabinets with this muted hardware that just really makes you feel calm. And then when you look across to the nook, you've got this mossy green paint and then you've got this orangey velvet sofa they just found that fit perfectly in the space. And they kind of complement each other in this beautiful harmony. The oval table is a great solution for a smaller dining area. Plus these cool on-trend cane chairs match the ones in the kitchen, so it all feels very cohesive. This gorgeous home office was designed by Michelle Gage. Obviously the first thing you notice when you walk into this space is the wallpaper. And Michelle went all out with this beautiful pattern from House of Hackney. Since that print is so bold, the rest of the design and decor elements are simple. The desk is just natural wood in two tones. You've got a brass lamp, so that we're not bringing any more color in there. There is a pop of blue with the chair, which works to great effect to pull out some of the color in those leaves. The overall effect is she's not hiding or cowering from all the color in that wallpaper. She's using some tones to pull it out and using others to chill it out. There are three beautifully designed bedrooms, but this primary suite is a true showstopper. It's designed by David Quarles. I'm a huge fan of his work. Let's start with the wallpaper, which really draws you into the space. David designed it himself and named it after his grandmother. It's called Ruth's Garden. From there, David used three different paint colors pulled directly from that pattern. In the can, those colors may look a little dark, but the floor to ceiling windows really brighten them right up. I'm calling this a faux chandelier. It's actually three different fixtures that David hung from the ceiling at different lengths. And last but not least, the disco ball, one of David's go-tos. It adds a nice sparkle and a real playful vibe to the room. The rooftop is really the crown jewel of this whole place, and we worked with Linda Hazlett of LH Designs to make it shine. There are four casual seating areas, one with a fireplace, plus a dining space. And that kind of variety of experiences is what a well-designed space should encourage. I hope you enjoyed checking out The Real Simple Home with me. And remember, if you were inspired by anything you saw, scan that QR code and let's go shopping. And if you'd like a closer look at The Real Simple Home, Pick up the October issue of Real Simple out now, or go to realsimple.com and check out our 360 virtual tour. Happy designing. You heard Lauren, definitely check out the newest issue of Real Simple Magazine out now. Coming up just after the break, we are taking a tour of this indoor outdoor dream home in Malibu. You are not gonna wanna miss. Welcome back everyone. Now what do you think of when you hear Malibu Fabulous? 
sunlight, clean lines, indoor outdoor living. Well, that is exactly what architects Sylvia Cool and Jeffrey Allsbrook of Standard Architecture created in this exquisite home. Take a look and feel fabulous. Hi, my name is Jeff Allsbrook. Hi, my name is Sylvia Cool. Welcome to Little Doom Beach. This home is modeled after a resort. It's calm and relaxing and has all natural materials. We designed the house to be open and airy with high ceilings and lots of daylight. Enough talking about it. Let's start the tour. One of the first things you'll notice when you walk into the house is the notion of transparency. There's floor to ceiling glass that opens up in the front and the back and the floors extend through the house and out to the exterior. We place this fireplace wall that's a see-through to the dining room beyond the entry. Hello, and there's more room on this side. Here you see the dining room right next to the fireplace and it's wrapped in natural light. When you look up, you see the wooden ceiling and clear story windows letting in light from the outside. And what is great about the front yard, it's completely zen and calm. It's kind of a beachy, sandy theme with aloe trees and coastal grasses. The living room of the house is like the center of a cross where space comes in from the inside and out through this door and then the family kitchen wing is over there and the bedroom wing is over there. The ceiling was a structural feat because we had glass going around all four sides of it and there's just one small connection where it gathers strength from the wall of the house. We did that to make it seem very light and airy and as if it's floating. Leading to the backyard, there's this 25 foot wide sliding wood door that completely pockets. When the door is open, you've got a seating group in here, seating outside, and it's all one space. Every time I'm in a kitchen, I'm so happy because the kids can be right out there in the pool and the drinks and the food is right here if they need them. And speaking of drinks, what better place to serve them than here on the island with this beautiful Kakata marble. And then we continued the second counter and the backsplash and created a shelf above where you can have your cookbooks. Well, we made most of the house open and airy for indoor, outdoor living and fun with the kids. When you need to get away, there's the primary suite. What we did here with a primary bedroom, it's separate from everything and had its own private courtyard outside. We created two courtyards, one directly off the bedroom and another one off the bathroom. The bedroom wing is the most private part of the house, so you've got your own relationship to the landscape here. You can go from the bedroom around the corner into the primary bath and it's a whole different experience. This outside area is why you want to live in the house. This is everything. You see the pool, you can have a drink in a bar, just relax. This is the one place on the property where you can see the entire house. You can see the floating roof in the middle and then the two more enclosed wings on the sides. The pool aligns with the house, the pergola aligns with the pool in the house. Overall, the house is an extension of the landscape where the landscape flows straight through it and the house becomes just one more element to experience the site. The client allowed us to create a masterpiece. We had a great time showing you the house. Thank you for stopping by and we'll see you soon. Bye. Coming up just after the break, the ever fashionable Cynthia Rowley shows us around her West Village home. Welcome back everyone. Now we join fashion designer Cynthia Rowley at her impressive and eclectic West Village home. What really makes it an urban oasis is the backyard. And may we recommend bringing a towel? Hi, I'm Cynthia. Welcome to my home. I wanted to have almost like a loft-like feeling. It's very eclectic. A lot of people have described it as sort of the Royal Tenenbaums on acid. I love it. Let me take you on a tour. This is sort of like the grown-up hangout area. 
This is where we all have cocktails and maybe watch a movie. The couch was made by an artist friend of ours and I recovered it in this lavender and made the leopard print pillows for it. This is really where the grown-ups hang. The kids have their own space. you notice a big cutout in the middle of the living room. That leads to the mezzanine, which is where we have all the instruments. Very often there's a whole bunch of kids banging on drums, playing electric guitar. It makes me really happy. I just hope the cops don't show up. The living room is very open and light but the music room, I wanted it to have that kind of like rock star vibe. So it's kind of dark and moody and has like a kind of backstage feeling. When the doors open up, I feel like it's a little personal oasis in the middle of the city. Somehow I got permits to build a swimming pool in the backyard and we really use it a lot. I wanted to keep swimming into the fall winter and it took me a while to figure out that, duh, I make wetsuits. I'll just wear one of my wetsuits and go for a swim. So that's what I do now all the time and it's great. For us, this is a fun house. We're ready for anything. Thanks so much for stopping by. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>